What is the best mid-power e-bike motor between the Bosch Performance SX, the TQ HPR50, the Fazua Ride 60, and the Specialized SL 1.2? We've got four bikes here today, and that is what we're gonna try and find out. So for our motor test, we're going to compete in a series of challenges. The first of which is a simple drag race. Everyone in a line with all of the bikes in the highest power mode. First one past the post is the winner. This test will give us an idea of relative torque to start with as we accelerate, then peak power as we approach the speed limiter. Next up, we've got a hill climb challenge, which is all about peak torque at low pedal speeds, as well as being a test of geometry, line choice, body position, and balance. And with the hill climb out the way, we're all going to ride until the batteries run flat and then compare the range. All of the bikes are running 29 inch wheels with Maxxis Max Terra compound tires. We've equalized the tire pressures and we're going to use the maximum power mode for the full duration of the challenge. Right, Jamie, tell me about the bike you're on today. Okay, I am on the new Canevo SL2. It's the bike that came out really recently. Uh, power is probably one of the least uh, of all these bikes here. We got 320 watts of peak power. We got 50 uh, newton meters of torque, pretty small battery, pretty small range extender, which I haven't got. But um, less power, less power so I'm means that you're draining less, less battery. Yeah. So maybe yeah. you might do all right on the range test. Yeah. If you have any questions about the full range of specialized e-bikes, then you can always speak to the Treads experts via the online chat tool. Uh, so this is the Mondrake Neat, and it uses the TQ HPR50 motor, which is the world's smallest e-bike motor. 50 newton meters of torque, 300 watts of power with a 360 battery and an optional 160 range extender. So the bike's actually quite a light bike and a light system, so I'm kind of hoping that the lack of weight is going to power us up. If you want to learn more about the Mondrak and Neat, then head over to Treads. So Tobes, what are you on today? So I'm on the new white E-Lite that's got the Bosch SX motor in there, which has got 55 newton meters of torque. It's got a 400 battery, it's got a peak power of 600, and it's weighing in at two kgs, which is about a kg lighter than their full fat CX motor. So last bike is the high bike like. This has got the Fazua Ride 60 system in it. 60 newton meters peak torque. It's got 450 watts peak power, but only for 30 seconds. So after that, I think it seconds. drops down to 400 or something. Internal battery is 430 watt hours, so it's the biggest here, but they don't do a range extender. Cool thing on this bike is the actual drive unit for the motor is in there, seat tube, and then the battery's here. Pop that cover off, slide the battery out again for charging or popping another one in there. Pretty cool. If you want to learn more about the high bike like, then head over to the Treads website. Before we get down to business, I want to say a quick thanks to the sponsors of this video. Treads is one of the UK's largest specialist cycle retailers. They are the online bike experts, being staffed by passionate cycling enthusiasts and located just a stone's throw from some of the best mountain bike trails in the UK. And those experts are always on hand to give advice through the online chat tool. Treads stocks a wide range of e-bikes from brands such as Specialized, Mondraka, and High Bike, all of which can be bought through the Cycle to Work scheme, which could help you save as much as 42% off the amount you pay. Ready, set. Definitely over the motor. 21 kilometers an hour, it said. Did it? Yeah. What are we getting from that? I think we can unanimously say that 
the boss won, didn't it? Two out of three. The first one didn't count because you didn't. You yeah, that was. Off. Safely say that that the boss has got a lot of power, hasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's pokey, and but, you do get it going, and it carry it yeah, keeps going. Yeah. Totally. We, we all we all went out like hit the limiter, didn't we? So we were all trying to pedal above the limiter in the end, towards the end. Of the, yeah. The run, Is we? that what evens it out at the end? It's like some people are quicker to the limiter. Yeah. As soon as you get there, everybody's. Pretty it was, wasn't it? It just yeah. stayed the same yeah. once we get to that point. But maybe once you get past that limit, having a lighter bike is actually, well, it, it's definitely an advantage. Yeah. yeah. It was surprisingly evenly matched, I think, is probably what we can draw from that. I don't think I did very well. Yeah, I don't know if I'll get much higher. We'll give it another go. I reckon I can get to that route, but I don't know if I can get past it. Maintenance here. Right. Help us out. Uh, oh, I'll take that. Yeah. Oh, don't ruin the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, boy. Woo. Danny. Toby. Me. And someone else. Well, try my best. <laughs> Pretty much in order of that peak torque, isn't it? Yeah, it's the torque, isn't it? Yeah. And there's, oh, there's a bit of luck involved as well. Yeah. Bit of talent as well. <laughs> Six percent, but it's giving me nothing. Oh really? Oh, it's gone into limp. Yeah, you're on eco. Really Bike's died. Our batteries. Well, not died. It's just run out of batteries. Um, so I'm just going to stop the stop the numbers. Nine nine one. Wow. I feel all right. I don't feel too bad. I've just this this motor has sort of just really nicely assisted me at the sort of pace and yeah. the day's ride. What are you on, Rob? Fourteen. Okay. You got one more. You got one more climb. I got two two bars left, around 30%, I guess. So I've still got to keep going. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's been a long day of riding. Future fun challenges we've been discussing the various merits of the different motors how they feel on the different bikes we're going to crunch the numbers now we're going to head over to the studio and see what the running order was so we've looked at the numbers from the range test we've got all those we're going to look at those in a minute but before we get to them let's talk about for the first test was yeah. the, the drag race yeah which is kind of to begin with it's sort of all about torque because you're at standing start yep that gets you up to speed and then once you're up to a certain speed it's all about the kind of power of the motor isn't it you actually won the first yeah i won round, the first one you? and i was hoping we were going to stop it there <laughs> for many reasons actually because it was absolutely brutal <laughs> but yeah i won the first one and i think i got a good start which was like probably some of what it, it came down to yeah like we got a really good start 
Toby's grip span out, I think, and he like, and you didn't clip in, and like, yeah, I think it was probably a little bit of kind of us fumbling around yeah, for the yeah. technique at the start. Hey, but a win's a win, come on. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'll take it, I'll take it for yeah. sure. But then we did a couple more. Bosch was one, two out of three challenges. I think the Fazua was coming in second, roughly, and then the U, the TQ and the Specialized were very closely matched, the sort of third and fourth. Again, I was third on the hill climb, which is kind of about the right pace. That's about the right placing, I'd say, for the bike's power and wattage. It kind of came where it expected it to come. Mm -hmm. When you look at the results, if you took the four motors on paper, mm -hmm. transposed them to the hill climb test, it was basically yeah. in order of torque, really, wasn't it? Was it was right. It was yeah, exactly got, what you'd expect. I mean, I was riding the Fazur. Uh, it's got the most torque at 60 Newton meters. Yeah, and you actually made it, didn't you? I mean, you kind of... Did it in did two it stages, two parts. but yeah. like, you proved that it can be done. I think, it, it, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it's definitely possible to ride it on that bike. So yeah, that was, it was, it was an interesting couple of challenges. So that leaves the final challenge, which was basically we just gonna, we just kept on riding How until can you go? the batteries yeah. ran out, didn't we? So the scores on the board were in reverse order. The specialized managed 970 meters of elevation yeah. gain. The Bosch came in at 991 meters of elevation gain. Pretty close. The TQ did 1,033 meters of elevation gain, and the Fazua was quite a way in front with 1,120 meters. How many was that? Four more laps of the trail we would lap in out? I think it was about like four more laps. I mean, it wasn't a long descent, but I got four more runs in than you guys. Yeah. Did it actually comp just die or did it go into a limp as you were climbing? So up, yeah. the last climb, there was a drop in power from okay. the motor, but it wasn't, a sub it wasn't substantial. It wasn't like a limp mode. Mm. And then it really just died, okay. literally just died. And I think the same kind of happened with the Bosch, whereas I think with the Specialized and the TQ, it was much more like it, it yeah, dropped, it down and tapered then, off. Yeah, like maybe about 9, 10%. The battery suddenly it started to taper. And then by the time I hit 5%, it was just like doing nothing. nothing. I could literally toggle it down to off and it mm. felt the same. So I declared it <laughs> dead even though it was 5% left. So yeah, we, we rinsed them. Yeah. yeah, but I think that's quite impressive actually that all of them almost managed 1,000 meters of climbing. And that's in full power mode, remember? What was kind of noticeable from when we were climbing together as a group is that myself and Toby, who was on the Bosch, we definitely had to put less effort into our pedal yeah, strokes yeah, on the climbs yeah. than you guys. You seem yeah. to be working harder. Yeah, we, I felt like I was working pretty hard that day. <laughs> Again, that fits in with, the, if we look at the stats on paper, you've got the Fazua and the Bosch with, they've got a lot more power, more power yeah. than, the, than the TQ and the Specialized. And that's where you notice that on the kind of more gradual climbs. Yeah. Um, you're just getting more input from the motor, and so you have to, you can put less input from your legs in yeah. if you want to. But the Fazua was in a kind of a league of its own, really, I think. Um, well, it's got a bigger battery, isn't it? Like, it has the biggest battery, yeah. and we should point out also that the Bosch, although the battery is just about a little bit less than 10% smaller, it does have more power again, so mm. it's draining more yeah, it's from that battery. that battery. quicker. So theoretically, if you were to notch down the Bosch power to a similar level to the Fazua, mm. so you're kind of talking about 200 watts less, yeah. theoretically it should have the same amount of range effectively, um, depending on, on kind of what the efficiency of the motor is. Yeah. Are you going to do that though? Are you going to get a bike with this much power and then purposefully notch well, down? Maybe you might. It depends on who you're riding with, doesn't yeah. it? Mm. If you've got friends mm. who are on bikes with TQ motors and yeah. specialized motors, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. then you, you probably would, wouldn't you? Whereas if you're on a Bosch SX bike and you're riding with mates on full fat bikes, you're mm. gonna be wanting all that power as yeah. much as you can. Yeah, it's a good point. And that maybe if you were always riding the bike in full power in turbo, you, maybe you'd have got the wrong bike. Maybe you should actually have got a full powered e-bike rather than a lightweight e-bike. Maybe, the but then lead. it's about all about, then the, the, yeah. the riding experience on the descents and on the single track. On Which the, is why you have the SL, yeah. They yeah. are definitely substantially mm. more dynamic to ride, aren't I mean, they? Yeah, without question. Uh, yeah. And I would say yeah. more fun and more engaging to ride. Like, yeah, I, I actually prefer fair. the ride experience. Yeah, that's, I think that's fair. So I think there's a lot of advantages to a, to a mid-parry bike. They can actually go do quite a lot of climbing 
they're actually pretty powerful. Yeah. It sort of depends on what you're looking for, mm. really. And each of the each of the most motors has a different characteristic, mm. different pros and cons. Yes. The TQ super quiet, super small, super mm. compact. You know, the bike looks really like a analog bike. It does. The Fazua is gives you great range, gives you great power. It's got pretty good efficiency. The Specialized again, it's very efficient, small. It's normal. The like Bosch gives bike. you yeah. tons of power. Yeah. So it, they've all got their kind of place. You can kind of rank them. You can kind of group them, can't you? You can do the two more, most powerful motors. They, they seem like genuine things in their own right. They're kind of like designed to have 60 newton meters of torque and all the power. And then, then the TQ and the specialized 1.2 meter, you can put those together because they are very much trying to be like, a, like an analog bike, mm. but just with a bit more power for the climb. So that's yeah. kind of the way I think of them. Yeah, and yeah. it's 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 weight as well, and the TQ and the Specialized are yeah. a lighter system yeah. than the Bosch and the Fazua. Mm. That's kind of why the bikes are lighter as well. Yeah. You know, you've got the Levo SL, which is around about 17 to 18 kilos, and mm. then you've got the Mondraker, which is eight, was 18 kilos, the one we weighed, but yeah. you've got TQ bikes that are even lighter. So it's kind of the brands are also choosing their motor depending on sort of what, what they aspect want they want to wanna yeah. accentuate. Yeah, yeah you know? totally, yeah. Hey, so I think that rounds it up. I think it was some re really interesting results. It was a really fun day. Uh, it just shows kind of how capable these lightweight bikes are. So I hope you enjoyed watching that video as much as we enjoyed making it. And if you're considering buying a mid-power motor, let us know which one you would choose.